Good morning, dolls, and welcome to Little Gretchen's Workshop. So today we're continuing with our dollhouse luggage series, and this is part three. Now we're going to make a piece of luggage that looks like a tapestry, sort of like a carpet bag. Now, dolls, we're going to use a frame, but we're not going to use the binder clip. This is going to be a true trash to treasure bag. Now, it's actually made out of some leftover fabric from an old coin purse I had. And I really like the fabric. So I ripped it up and I used a cardboard liner inside a leftover Avon container. And so the piece of cardboard liner is kind of the same shape as the binder clip. So I thought it would be perfect because I really want you dolls to learn how to create with whatever you have. Don't feel restricted or hindered by not having all the same exact materials that I have here on the channel. Now here I added my glue at the bottom and began to fold the pieces of the fabric coin purse around the paper. Now I am using my hot glue in this instance, again, because the fabric is firm and it will hold it down a little bit better because when you're using fabric that's really um, firm or has a lot of body like that, it really resists being glued down. So the hot glue gun glue gives it a kind of a quick grab, similar to when you use the fabric fix, but sometimes it looks works a little bit better on finer fabrics. This is a very uh, full body fabric and it was really trying to resist me. And dolls, you know, I don't like that. And the technique is very similar to what I used when I did the binder clip um, bag in the introduction video. Now, if you haven't seen that video, I will leave a link in the description. Now, after I tucked it and got it tucked all down, and dolls, take a moment to observe your piece to make sure everything's like you want it before you do that final lockdown on the glue. Check the sides, the edges around the back, see how the bottom looks. And I even compared it in size to my other bags to make sure I was staying in scale and see how nice and neat the sides are. Now this size is a little bit bigger and more bountiful. It actually looks like um, one might be an overnight bag and the other one might be an actually week, a bag that would carry a week's worth of clothing. So decide what you want to do when you're making your luggage. You want different sizes, different shapes, different fabrics. You know, you want your setting to look interesting and realistic. Again, not a sea of saying. Now, after I got the body of my bag together, I began to add the straps. And these are those just those little leather and suede straps that you buy um, that are used for making jewelry. They're like a uh, suede and leather cording for jewelry. It's nice and fine. It's the right weight. And they're nice and thin, so they look realistic. You don't want a ribbon or a strap that looks too big and bulky because again, it will make your uh, item look out of scale and it'll look unrealistic. Now dolls, if you notice when I'm putting these straps on, I did use the beacon three in one or the fabric tack to add these details because the hot glue gun glue would be too bulky and it would show. Now at this point, the bag is actually done where you put your straps, your buckles, your rivets and any embellishments is specifically a matter of taste and what type of style you're trying to achieve. Now dolls, I did have a small piece of that tapestry looking fabric left and I really just didn't want it to go to waste. And I thought it would be nice if I made a companion bag to make it look like the dolls had a set. So I took the piece of fabric and I had a little scrap piece of wood and I actually put it on and glued it and then decided that it was gonna make the base of the bag kind of big. So dolls, this was an instance where I'm just gonna let you see me fumble through this and actually change my mind in the middle of a design. It's really not pretty, but I just want you to see that sometime in the creative process, you'll have something in your mind and you'll start working on it and literally you'll change your mind in the middle of the process. So I just want to encourage you that if it seems like a project is not coming out the way you want it or you feel like you're messing up really bad, just be confident that if you continue to work and even if you have to start over, you can come up with something that you're really pleased with. Now at this point, I already knew that it was not going to work out, but I continued to work and I worked until I was so dissatisfied I ripped everything apart. 
but I was convinced it was such a nice piece of fabric, I didn't want to waste it. So I had these two little wooden blocks and I glued them together. I probably should have waited until they dried before I did this, but I didn't dolls. So again, I just want to show you that even if you're not real neat about it, you can still come up with something really cute. Now, if you're very neat and very precise and take your time and allow your pieces to dry properly, yours can come out even better than what I made here. But I was determined to use this little piece of fabric. And so to speed the drying process along for those little wooden blocks, I squeezed hot glue in the bag on top of them and then clamp the top of the bag down on top of the glued little blocks. And really the blocks are just to give the bag an impression that there's something in the bag. I originally had those couple pieces of fabric in the background shoved in there to give the bag a little bit of shape, but it wasn't working out the way I imagined. So the little square blocks worked out perfect and they're a good scale. And after I clamped it for a few seconds, the hot glue dried really nicely and the bag had a really nice shape. It looked like there was something in it and it looked more in scale with what I was trying to do than it did with that big piece of scrap wood at the bottom. I think this fabric is so lovely. Now I'm really getting to the end of this remnant. So I wanted to make a little flap and this was the last of the remnant piece. Now this piece had already been stitched, but I cut it off to the size of the top of my bag and wrapped it around the top. And I figure after I put it on and seal it, I'll just be able to add trim around the edges to finish off that part that's frayed and the part that has the stitching along the edge. So I added a little fabric fix and laid it across the top and folded it and I clamped it again because I wanted it to be a really nice neat fit really firm and all together. So here we are dolls. This is our completed bag. And when I say completed, I'm just saying the general shape of the bag. Now, when it gets to this stage, again, you can design it or detail it any way you like. The straps can be double straps. You can do single straps. You could do it like a shoulder bag if you like. But in this instance, for me, I want it to be like a small tote, sort of like a carry on with double straps. Now, dolls, try to be as neat as possible when you're applying your glue. The thinnest, smallest bead is always best, although that's not always what you see on this channel. But dolls, do as I say, not as I do. <laughs> now, dolls, for the trim and the straps, you can use small ribbon or tiny braid. But I use those tiny leather and suede cords that you find in the area for jewelry making. I feel like those cords are just the right size for dollhouse luggage. So dolls here, I'm just showing you how I put the border around the flap just to define that area to make it separate from the bag itself. So let's go ahead and get those straps on there. Now dolls, when you're adding double straps, make sure you cut the straps the same length and try to add them in the same place on the bag. Now I think it looks more in scale when the loop isn't so wide, it's a little narrower because the doll's hands aren't that big. So if you make the loop really, really wide and really, really big, it looks awkward. Now, even when I'm doing luggage dolls, I always dry fit, try fit. Just kind of hold it on there to see how it looks to get a feel as to where you want to place it. And then you add your little beads and dots of glue and lay it down. Now you're going to need to give it a hard press to make sure that it catches and make sure, like I said, you adjust it where you want it to be before you allow the glue to set up. And again, dolls, when you get it to this point, that's your bag. When you get here, dolls, you can decorate and detail your bag as little or as much as you like using beads or, or studs as rivets, buckles, grommets, anything you like dolls to customize and detail your bag. Now make sure at the end you pull off any tr and trim any stray strings or threads and clean up any leftover glue that may be showing around the handles or the edges of your bag. Now I didn't do a whole lot of detailing for this bag, but I did want it to look similar to the original bag. Now dolls, if you've enjoyed this video today, definitely let me know in the comments. Also like, share, and subscribe. 
and stay tuned for part four of Bags, Boxes, and Luggage. So I'm looking forward to seeing you on the next episode of Little Gretchen's Workshop. Bye-bye now, dolls.